quick and big approach, November 142, Golf Golf. Uh, 13,000, oh, flight level 130, direct from Mick Blue, have information, Oscar 992. Number 142, Golf Golf, thank you very much. Contact. Expect uh, runway 19 landing eyelash or armor. QH 992. Okay, we're over towards Mingfu and have a the ILS Zulu for runway 19, November 142, Golf Golf. Okay, uh, Golf Golf, expect ILS Zulu 19. Expect ILS Zulu 19, November 142, Golf Golf. Reykjavik Airport, status information Oscar at 1720 UTC, runway 19er in use. Expect ILS approach, runway 19er. Weather at 1720 UTC, wind 230 degrees, 10 knots, visibility 10 kilometers or more, cloud scattered at 2700 feet, temperature 5, dew point 0, QNH 0 niner, niner 2 hectopascal, 2 niner decimal 30 inches, transition level 80, bird activity is moderate, runways damp, gliders at Sunscape and vicinity. Bird Sigmet, Bravo 01, valid until 19000 Zulu. Advise on initial contact, you have information, Oscar. Inbound to Reykjavik at 13, uh, flight level 130 at the moment, routing towards Mikvu. And Mikvu is the initial approach fix for the ILS Zulu for one ray 19. And I've contacted the approach frequency on 119.0. I've also started to do my approach briefing as well. So 119.0 is selected, which I'm speaking on at the moment. 118.0 is the tower. And I've also got down on here the ground frequency as well, and I've already, already listened to the ATIS. So that's my communications, my approach. So I have loaded that in there. I have Zulu runway 19. The controller has already cleared me to Mikvu and by him clearing me to Mikvu that has actually activated the approach. Um, I haven't armed the approach yet, but I have uh, on the autopilot, but I have activated the approach purely by going direct to Mikvu. So the approach is loaded and activated. My navigation, so 119.0 is my ILS frequency and 109.9 is my DME frequency because it is uh, paired with the same channel for the ILS DME here at Reykjavik. My minimums I've selected in here, 240 feet, and my missed approach is to climb 900 feet on 189 degrees, then do a turn to 324 degrees, climbing 3,600 feet, contact Reykjavik approach, and they'll give me radar vectors. So that's my approach briefing, all done. The autopilot's in GPS, so it's tracking myself to Mikvu. Autopilot on your damper is on, and I'm currently at flight level 130. A few nice things that you can see on the aircraft is we have this sync mode which is really, really useful. So what that is, is that the heading bug, while I'm navigating using GPS on the autopilot, the heading bug will always follow wherever the aircraft is adjusting its heading based upon the wind. So therefore, you see here, if I move the heading bug away, then it just stays there. But if I synchronize the heading bug by pushing the heading button on the autopilot, then what happens here is the heading bug goes to the top, goes into sync mode, and if the wind changes and the aircraft has to change heading because it needs to keep on tracking the GPS course en route to Mikvu, then the heading bug will actually move with it. And what that does is it really, really helps because it saves you having to keep on syncing the heading bug. So really, really useful mode, the sync mode of the PFD. When the on discussion, descent after 6,000 feet on QNH 992. At my discretion, descent 6,000 feet on QNH 992, November 142, Golf Golf. Number 142, Golf Golf, advised. We have some uh, 
had some reports of uh, icing in clouds around 4,000 feet in the area. Oh, Roger, thanks for that. Um, I might wait just uh, a couple of minutes before I start my descent if that's okay. November 140, Golf Golf. Number 142, Golf Golf. No worries, there's no traffic. Roger, thanks very much. Okay, so we've been cleared down to 6,000 feet on 992. And what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to wait for my vertical navigation profile to become active with my 2.5 degree flight path angle, which is giving me 822 feet per minute. And we're going to listen out for the vertical path warning, and then I'm going to set it up so that the aircraft will follow my vertical navigation profile. So he's warned us of a little bit of ice at 4,000 feet. It's actually quite clear out here at the moment, but I'm going to wait just a little bit longer for my descent as well. So here comes my one minute to my top of descent. Vertical track. There's my vertical track warning. And what I get here straight away is I get the information from the PFD saying that the VNAV is not armed. So what I need to do here is I need to set up 6,000 feet so I can do that on the panel. There's 6,000 feet. That's actually flight level 60, but I'm going to change it in a little while. And what I also need to do is select VNV on the autopilot control panel to get V path. So what I can see here now is that my vertical navigation profile, this is me in the middle. There's my vertical profile, which I'm coming along to intercept. There's my rate of descent. So as soon as that starts to intercept and we go down the path, then vertical path takes over. Altitude select comes on at 6,000 feet. Even though my vertical profile is actually 3,600, I've got 6,000 feet there and I'm starting to descend. I'm just going to back off the throttle a little bit here, come back to about 25, uh, 24 inches, just so I don't accelerate too much. And then what I'm going to do here is because the Q&H or the altimeter setting is so different to the standard barrow, it really causes problems if you now change the barometric setting from 1013 to 992. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to change it very, very slowly. It does say preview, but I'm just going to push that to stop it. And you see here, every time I change it, the plane's altitude changes, and then the vertical profile also changes as well. So I've got to be really quite careful not to change it too quickly. Otherwise the plane just levels off, goes to the vertical profile and then goes down again. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to change it a, a few hectopascals at a time. You can see here that the aircraft is just leveling off very, very slightly so it can, it can still re-intercept the flight path coming down. So every time I change this, if I change it all the way to 992 now, just as an example, you see how that changes the altitude and then suddenly I'm below my flight path. So I'm below my flight path angle, so now the aircraft now is pitching up very, very slightly, getting away from the vertical speed target so that it can intercept from below the vertical path. But it will do it. It will, sit, it will get there and it will re-intercept here and I'll go back down again. So that's fine, I'm quite happy with that. So getting into my checklist now, I'm going to go into groups. I've got normal checklist, which is exactly what I want, and then come down to my descent checklist. And oxygen is as required, so I don't need my oxygen now. Altimeter set, yes, I've just put 992 in there. Cabin heat and defrost, yeah, I've got the heater on because it's actually quite cold in here and I've been up here for quite a long time. My landing light is on. My fuel system, my fuel system is checked. Yes, I'm actually running on the left tank at the moment and that's the fullest tank. My power for descent, well, if I wanted to come down really quickly, I could use 18 to 20 inches. But, in fact, I'm very, very happy here, just keeping a slightly higher speed 
with only about 23 inches of manifold pressure, it just keeps a bit of heat into the engine. My mixture, I'm going to leave my mixture lever exactly where it is, on the blue line, with the aircraft in the peak situation at the moment. And my brake pressure, yeah, I've got brakes, that's good. 500 feet, that's right, was that for November 2 Golf Golf? Off the ground, South Descent, 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 a little bit later on, but that's great. So now we're actually descending down all the way down to our initial approach fixed altitude, which on the approach plate does say 3,600 feet, but she's cleared us down to 3,500 feet. I've done my descent checks, I've done my can I go checks, I know that the approach is all briefed. I can now see here that I've got my India Romeo Kilo on my nav number one. So I can see that that has identified. However, if I did want to have a listen to it, I can select the ID, and then I can have a listen by pushing the ID button, make sure they uh, turn the volume down a little bit. Okay, India Romeo Kilo, so that's correct. Fantastic. So I can just turn the nav off. If I want to do the same for the second one, I can select ID up on there, push nav 2. Romeo Kilo, so that's identified. And here the DME, one of the things we've got to remember about the DME is it's not actually on this frequency, that's only the frequency we use to select it, and it doesn't come up with an ident, so down here in auxiliary on the audio panel, I'm going to push that and wait for the Morse code ident. There we go, just heard that there, I just turned it up a little bit, uh, a little bit late, but I could hear that, I'll just leave it on so I can hear it again. And as we're coming down, got my altitude select arc telling me that I'm going to be spot on at the right altitude at Mikvu, which is lovely. I'm quite happy with my speed at the moment, 160 knots and a bit. There we go, so I've got my DME identified as well. So my comms are set, my approach is loaded and activated. My navigation aids are good. My high dent is good for nav one, nav two, and the DME. And I have my minimas, and I've already briefed my missed approach as well. Here we can see the preview of the localizer. So that's telling us which direction the localizer is in, and it's about 190 degrees, so that's great, so that's also working. So what I'm expecting to happen is that when I get to my final approach fix leg, which is the Romeo Kilo Foxtrot 19, I'm expecting when that leg becomes active for the localizer to turn green, and then it'll be armed. And what they've done also is they've also cleared us for the approach. So down on the autopilot control, I can push the approach button, and here I can see localizer, and glide slope is armed. My altitude descent at the moment with my vertical path is armed as well. So yeah, so that's all good. So coming up towards the clouds, temperature outside is about minus eight. But I know that I'll be sending down a little bit. So all I'm gonna do is I am gonna put on my de-icing system and just put it on high for literally like a minute. So I'm just going to look out the wings, 
just get a little bit of moisture um, or TKS fluid onto the wings. Just, you know, had a little bit of a warning saying that there might be a little bit of ice, uh, or there was ice fall. I reported at 4,000 feet, so I just want to get the wings a little bit wet so that I don't pick up any ice on the way down. And what I'm going to do as well is I'm pretty fast for the icing, the icing system. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to back off the manifold pressure to about 18 inches of manifold pressure. Just get some speed off the aircraft. Uh, because if I don't, if I'm going too fast, then what happens is the TKS fluid can't flow out of the aircraft. So, um, so I'm just going to get my speed back a little bit. See the glide slope here starting to display or the preview of the glide slope but I'm still on my vertical path coming down at the moment getting a little bit of uh, TKS fluid on the windscreen if I look left and right out of the wings I can see I'm getting fluid rolling over the wings as well which is exactly what I wanted to turn the uh, the icing system off again now the clouds seem pretty broken in fact so, um, so I'm not too concerned about it 1,000 feet to go and what we've got to be careful of here is we've got to make sure that the aircraft doesn't, 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 track. doesn't level off at 3,600 feet because we actually do want to go to 3,500 feet so what I'm going to do here while I've uh, only got a thousand feet to go I'm just going to put the aircraft into vertical speed mode instead of um, VNAV and I've got to turn the VNAV mode off as well so it doesn't do any other vertical tracks later on down the line and in fact I'm going to cancel my VNAV so I don't get my vertical navigation profiles coming up anymore um, I generally don't use them within the instrument approach some people do but once I'm sort of getting towards my initial approach fix then I'm quite happy not to use them anymore so checking out on the wings yeah there's not really anything um, building up on the wings in fact putting that little bit of uh, de-icing fluid on there has worked out really well and here I am turning up MIGFU now So as I go through Mikvu, 3,600 feet is the plate that I'll be cleared down to 3,500. And then when I turn at Exinu, then I can descend down to 2,800 feet, which will be my platform altitude to route myself in to descend down the INS. Their heading sync mode has been fantastic because it's just moved with the aircraft for the whole time so I haven't had to change that at all so I set 20 inches I've got 19 inches so I had, had about 20 inches set uh, when I was doing that final bit of a descent and you can see here now that it's really nice because I've descended down come through the final uh, initial approach fix and now the aircraft is slowing down to a really nice approach speed my approach is activated and is also armed with localizer and glide slope displayed zoom in the map a little bit that's always very useful expecting a turn very shortly and I'm going to set up 2,800 feet for my next descent and it's really important that even though I might be able to stay at 3,500 feet and intercept the glide slope um, it's actually quite important to go down to 2,800 because if I go to my platform if I don't go to my platform altitude and suddenly I lose the glide slope then I'm at the wrong altitude for my final approach fix to start a descent path using a localizer only so I could switch to a localizer only approach but it's no good if I haven't descended down to my 2,800 feet coming around the corner here I'm in no ma massive rush to descend to 2,800 feet so I'm going to let the plane turn I'm going to let it settle itself down on the inbound track 
the final approach fix leg has become active. I'm expecting this to switch over. Over to tower, 118 decimal zero. Over to tower, 118 decimal zero, November 142, golf, golf. OK, so I'm just turning now, and just as she spoke there, you can see there that the, my, my localizer has come on, as has my glide path is there. Localizer is active and my glide slope is armed. I'm just coming back to about 12 inches of manifold pressure here, just while we start going down to my platform altitude. And I'm going to give the controller a call. 118 decimal zero. I could be cat, November 142 Golf Golf is established at 10.5 miles. November 142 Golf Golf, very Cape Tower, good afternoon. Continue approach for runway 100, report 4 miles. Continue approach, report 4 miles, November 142 Golf Golf. So I'm descending down to my platform at 2,800 feet. I've just backed off the throttle to about 13 inches. So we're just starting to level off now, so I'm going to put my power back on again. So that's going to go back up to about 19 inches. Okay, great. Alpha left on Charlie, left on Alpha. When on Charlie, contact ground 1 to 1, there's more 7. Left on Charlie, left on Alpha, and Alpha contact ground 1 to 1. So the glide path is starting to come down. And we're starting to intercept it. I'm at 2,800 feet, which is my platform. So in fact, I could still, if I lost my glide slope, I could still actually take over and do a localizer only. And generally, at a three degree glide path, we'd be timesing our ground speed by about five if we didn't have a, a already looked at the chart. So here's my half scale deflection. I'm going to select one stage of flap. Get a little bit of ballooning with the one stage of flap going down, so therefore it's good to select it before you get to the, the glide slope intercept. The angle of attack indicator has come on as well. And then we can see here that just as I intercept, my glide slope will take over. I start to go down, I back it off to about 12 inches of manifold pressure, and then I should let the aircraft settle itself down to about 100 knots. I am visual with the runway, it's actually quite difficult to see it as it's uh, sort of embedded in a little bit of the town when you're coming on runway 19. That's all looking good, so just uh, make sure I've got uh, 12 inches of manifold pressure. Set. So front approach track leg is good. Inbound course and source is all set. Glide path, scoreboard, minimas. And mixtures rich. Number one for runway 19. Number one uh, for 19, November 142 Golf Golf. Fantastic. You see here that the sync mode is still kept on following around. So if anything fails here at all, I can go quickly into my heading mode and the aircraft will keep on staying on the heading. So I've got 12 inches of manifold pressure. I'm at 110 knots. You know, I'm quite happy with that. The, the main key thing is that the plane's stable and uh, yeah okay we normally uh, in the Cirrus like to be at 100 knots but I'm at uh, sort of 110 here and the aircraft's stable and it's just quite happy you find that if you start backing off the throttle too much to try and get the speed back down to 100 then you end up chasing it all over the place so about 12 inches of manifold pressure 30% power both of those work out quite nicely I've got my Ground frequency on number two. November 142 Golf Golf, four miles. 142 Golf Golf, we're runway 19, wind to 220 degrees, 8 knots, clear to land. Runway 19, clear to land, November 142 Golf Golf. So it's amazing, coming in the final part of the leg towards or from Greenland to Iceland. India Force Delta, continue uh, inbound route number one. You're number two behind a Cirrus. Uh, so coming down 1,000 uh, feet for only one match. For 240 feet. Uh, continue uh, route uh, number one. Traffic inside. Localizer's good. Glide path's good. I'm busy with the runway.
I think I'll go visual now. So I'm going to disconnect the autopilot. I'm going to keep on those pappies all the way down. I'm just closing the throttle a little bit, make sure I'm below the flat limit speed. There you go, 110, select the last stage of flap. Coming over the port, just adjusting the power. And brakes are good. Undercarriage is down and fixed on this aircraft, mixture's rich. 500. There's the 500 feet call. A little bit low, but you know, I'm quite happy here. Got uh, three whites, one red. Speeds are good. I've got my little donut here on the screen as well, so I can utilize that as uh, as my glide slope. Speed. Glide slope. Ah, oh, there you go. See, it uh, it recognized that I was a little bit above my glide slope, so therefore it started to give me that warning. But tells you that I wasn't even using it, so therefore. Um, I was just coming down using the puppies, so I come bring myself back minimums, down. Minimums, minimums. There's the minimums. My your damper has now gone off. That's what I'm going to do here. Quite happily is that as I cross the one nine numbers, I'm now looking at the very very far end of the runway. The speed is now towards 80 knots. As I look at the far end of the runway, I start closing the throttle smoothly towards idle. I start pitching up a little bit at a time, holding it, and as I see the aircraft sink. Settle it onto the ground, get good speed, and start braking and relaxing. Once I've got good speed on the control column. Now we're call Golf, left on runway 13, left on Alpha, and when the runway is vacated, monitor ground on 121 decimal 7. Left on 13, left on Alpha, and uh, monitor 121 decimal 7, and uh, 142 Golf Golf, thank you. Right, here's a runway 13, so just vacating off here. The nice thing to do on here is uh, to zoom the map in. Following the yellow lines. Yellow lines so important, especially if it was dark, to, to taxi the aircraft around the airfield, uh, especially at night. So just coming in now, and once I've vacated the runway, then my flaps can go to the up position, my pitot landing and strobe lights can go off. So monitor ground, so I'll just put that on COM2 on there and just taxiing into the ACE FBO. So I hope you enjoyed my little descriptions and uh, explanation on coming into Reykjavik. There we have the marshaller waiting for us, giving us our signal as to where to park. The only person on the ramp today. But I hope you enjoyed the explanation and the flight coming into here. So do subscribe to my channel if you uh, if you enjoyed it, and click a, a like as well. That's always very very useful and helps uh, helps us and encourages us to make more and more videos. So it's fantastic and uh, hope you enjoy the next video that I make. India Fox Hotel, to left on 13, left on Bravo. Left on 13 uh, and uh, Bravo to Skilisjö. Thank you. India Fox Delta.